Hello everyone, good evening. So we're going to continue in the notes from the professor in my class in microbiology. This is going to be the viral diseases of influenza, polio, rabies, smallpox, yellow fever, and malaria. These are also going to have some of those protozoal diseases as you saw there with malaria. That's going to be a protozoan that's causing that. All right, let's start with the viral diseases. And again, there's a lot of background on this, but we're just going to go to the ones that have that icon that the questions are going to be apparently pulled from. All right, so background. This is influenza. It's named in Italian's um, language where it's the influence. It's not a mild disease at all. It's killed more people than all the wars combined. 1918 is the deadliest pandemic at least 30 to 100 million people died. In the U.S., we had deaths from influenza as well as pneumonia, which is a secondary infection in 2015. There are about 15.1 to 100,000, and then there's 48,000 per year who die from influenza. Their case fatality rate is 0.1%. The structure of the influenza virus will have a protein layer. And then in our lipids, we're going to have something called the hemagglutinin. This is also known as the HA. And we're also going to have something called the neuroma. Sorry, I'm trying to pronounce these. Um, neuraminidase, neuraminidase, which is going to be NA. We also have the M2 ion channel. We have a single RNA, or single-stranded RNA, I should say, in eight pieces. Why do we need a flu shot every year? This is because we have all this variation in the virus. So um, it's an RNA virus, so there's not going to be any proofreading when it's going to hijack the host cell and then use its machinery to replicate itself. Since it's an RNA virus, we aren't going to have any of that proofreading. Therefore, we're going to have antigenic shift as well as antigenic drift. Let me just highlight some of these things before we move on. So antigenic drift is the notion where repeated mutations will cause a gradual change in HA and NA. If we're going to change those outside lipid layers, that's going to be difficult for our immune system to actually recognize. So that's why we need flu shots due to that antigenic drift. But we also have to worry about the shift that also happens. This is going to be the sudden shift caused when the virus acquires genome segments from other viruses by recombination. Once again, these two are going to play a big role in creating all this variation. So in antigenic shift, we could have a bird flu, and then we could also have a pig flu, and then those could combine their, um, their spikes. So you could have a combine, um, a combination of the bird flu spike, and then as well as the one from the pig. That's antigenic shift. We have a bunch of serotypes of influenza. We have H1N1 in 1918. That was a severe one. Again, we were talking about how it killed more people than any of the wars. We also had H2N2 in 1957. That one was also severe. There's type A. Those are all the H3N number 
Um, we also have type B and type C. Those have no antigenic serotypes, but they range from moderate to very mild. Okay, so we have the causative organism. Again, it's the influenza A, B, and C virus. It's enveloped its SSRNA in eight segments. Okay, transmission. There's going to be droplets. from coughs and sneezes, direct contact from the hands, and indirect contact from fomites, or inanimate surfaces. Again, these are very similar to um, how you could get other airborne um, viruses. Incubation period, this is going to be one to two days. Pathogenesis. We're going to um, infect the respiratory epithelium and lyse it. Once we lyse that epithelium of the respiratory system, we're going to have secondary infections such as pneumonia. And this is going to be damage to that mucociliary escalator. Next, the virulence factors are actually going to be our hemagglutinin. And our neuraminidase. Hemagglutinin is for attachment to the celiac acid receptor. Cialic, I should say. I said celiac, that's the wrong pronunciation. Sorry about that. That's again an acid. Um, the neuraminidase is for release. And this is going to detach or remove itself from the celiac or silic acid again. Symptoms standard fever, headache, sore throat, cough, runny nose, muscle aches known as myalgia. And of course, that sore throat and that cough. Prevention. In order to prevent influenza, we could use the killed injection. Or we could use live attenuated um, vapors or mist that flu vaccine that's a mist that's going to be live attenuated and we're going to have to take this of course yearly and then we could also wash our hands that's going to help a ton with a ton of these different pathogens distinctive features again we have that anti-genic shift as well as the antigenic drift. Antigenic drift, again, was the um, gradual change from all those repeated mutations in the HA and NA. And then antigenic shift is when you're having recombination with other types of influenza viruses and you're again changing those spikes on the outside. All right, let's move on to polio. Again, when polio was cured, um, there is a ton of celebration. There are church bells ringing. People couldn't wait to get this treatment because it was so groundbreaking and it was very devastating being treated in these iron lungs. So the virus itself, it's going to again have 
a capsid and an RNA genome. The causative organism is going to be known as, of course, the poliovirus. This is an SSRNA and now envelope. Transmission would be fecal oral or vehicle. Virulence, we're going to have the attachment mechanisms. Symptoms, okay, so first we're going to have sore throat, and this is going to have to go into virema. And then we're going to go into the central nervous system. So this virema, that's kind of unique here of poliovirus, central nervous system. When it goes into here, that's going to damage the motor cells. And we're going to have paralysis in less than 1% of the cases. Let me write that percentage better. So paralysis. Paralysis in less than 1% of the cases because we're again going into the central nervous as well as those motor cells to damage them. Prevention, we have the live attenuated. That's the Sabin. And then we also have the inactivated um, Salk. This is used in the US more because the Sabin, it could flare up, could test positive too. First one that we have is the Salk virus in 1955. And just from there, we have this great decrease in um, incidence of polio in the US. These areas are declared free of polio. America's Western Pacific, Europe, Southeast Asia, 80% of the globe is polio free. Unfortunately, um, there are some endemic polio areas in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. Hey, let's talk now about rabies. This is one of the most messed up viruses we are talking about in class. Virus will multiply in the skeletal muscles and then the brain cells cause encephalitis. There's also going to be hydrophobia. And we're going to have spasms. And there's no treatment for rabies when the symptoms are present. Again, no treatment when the symptoms are present. And then the hydrophobia, those are going to be um, very unique to this. So first, we're going to get um, bitten from the saliva. From a dog or another animal. Number two, I should actually probably write these in just standard um, numbers here. <laughs> Number two... Um, Kind of messed up there on the Roman numerals. All right. Uh, virus replicates in the muscle. And then we're going to move up the system into the central nervous system. And then we're going to go into the spinal cord. A virus is now going to go into the brain to cause that fatal encephalitis. And then number six, the virus will now go into the salivary glands. And then the other organs as well. So it's a very, very nasty thing. You need to make sure you get the rabies vaccine. In the topmost part of the US, going into the Midwest, like Iowa and Missouri a little bit, we have skunks. Then we have raccoons on the east coast, coyote in the south, 
um, bats are basically everywhere. And then foxes are going to be found in Alaska, the, the middle of Texas, and some places like Utah. First vaccination against rabies is, again, just some um, background. Joseph Meister was vaccinated in 1885 after being bitten by a rabid dog. The vaccine had the dried neural tissue from the rabbit that had rabies. And Louis Pasteur was also involved in this, as well as Emile Roux. Right, the rabies lysa virus is going to be the cause of this. Let me zoom in here a bit. As a causative organism, this is going to be the SSRNA enveloped. Again, the non-enveloped one so far was poliovirus. You might want to circle that. All right, transmission. We talked about it. We're going to have the saliva from bite from an animal droplet contact. Again, same thing. Saliva contact, um, virulence, virulence, I should say. We're going to have glycoproteins on the envelope, and these are going to let it get to the central nervous system. The symptoms, as we talked about, we're going to have um, initially hydrophobia. Then hydrophobia is going to go into furious, restless, or restlessness. Then we're going to have this period known as the paralytic rabies. And that's going to be a trance-like state when the animal is paralyzed due to rabies. Prevention. The HDCV, this is the human diploid cell rabies vaccine. It's inactivated. But then you need to add this next step. You need to use the post exposure anti serum as well as the um, active immunization. So again, we need to combine the anti-serum plus this diploid cell rabies vaccine when we're, we're going to try and uh, prevent rabies. Again, you can't treat it because once you have those um, viruses in your central nervous system in the brain. It's unfortunately a fatal disease. You need to be ahead of these things, again, like any other disease and any other pathogen. You make sure you're ahead of the curve. All right, smallpox. Smallpox was seen in the 11th eleventh. Um, century BC, Ramses V had signs of it in 1860 and 932, it was found in Persia, and then to um, the 18th century, 400,000 Europeans in a year will die. Cortez brings it to the New World, they're going to use smallpox sometimes as a biological weapon against the Native Americans in these areas. Both Hernan Cortez use it, unfortunately, against the Native Americans and the first people in Mexico and Central America. There's going to be 3.5 people, 3.5 million people dying in Mexico and Central America due to the use of it in bio-warfare. And then we're also going to have an incident in 1633 in Massachusetts, where Narragansett's um, indigenous people were annihilated by it again due to biowarfare and just the exposure to this. The last U.S. outbreak was in the Rio Grande in 1949, and in our terms now, it's eradicated in 1979 by the Worldwide Vaccination Program. Oh, 
Oh, he caught by the variola. This is the enveloped uh, double-stranded DNA virus. So again, this is a new, this is a unique thing so far. We haven't seen anything that is DNA. We've been seeing single-stranded RNA. We're gonna have to circle that. All right, the mode of transmission. This is going to be droplet and indirect contact. Okay, signs and symptoms. We're going to have fever, of course, prostration, a rash, toxemia. So a toxin is now in the blood and shock. These two have been unique so far, so I'm gonna just underline them. Virulence factors include the ability to dampen and avoid the immune response. Prevention, going to use the live vaccine known as the vaccinia. Again, that's from um, cowpox. That's why it's vaca. That's like a that's a word for cow. So vaccinia cowpox, or um, yeah, vaccinia virus. All right, treatment. This is going to be immunoglobulin or passive immunity. Could also talk about measles, similar. This is caused by the measles, morbillivirus. Also known as the measles virus, it's SSRNA and enveloped. This is going to be droplet contact. And of course, it's going to be the respiratory portal. The symptoms for measles include a macropapular, uh, maculopapular rash. That's a little bit unique there. And we're going to also have the cop lick spots in the mouth. So two um, unique symptoms. Virulence. We're going to have the syncytium formation. It's when the cells this fuse, I think, and we're going to also we're going to also suppress the cell mediated immune system prevention. We could prevent it using the MMR vaccine, which is live complications. We could have diarrhea, otosmedia, pneumonia, and then it's the leading cause of death in adults from acute encephalitis. And these go from 8% to 7 to 6, and then 0.1% cases of that acute encephalitis when it's the leading cause of death. The Democratic Republic of the Congo measles in 2019-2020, uh, nearly 6,000 people died in this unfortunate major outbreak. 
are going to be 300,000 people infected in that year alone. The WHO says it's the world's largest and fastest moving epidemic in that area. There's going to, unfortunately, be the notion that the virus killed more than twice the number who have died from Ebola there in the last 15 months. So it's just a pandemic that's still um, happening in this part of the world, unfortunately. All right, let's talk about yellow fever. We are almost done. We're flying through these. So we have some history in this one. So, Finlay, he's a Cuban doctor, Carlos Finlay, um, he proposes the mosquito is the mode of transmission rather than human contact. Therefore, Walter Reed and a team of doctors uh, went to test this hypothesis. They had these mosquitoes with the um, um, yellow fever patients. So then they let the members of the commission get bitten. So they let the mosquitoes attack their own men. The disease was eliminated from La Habana uh, through mosquito control. And then later we're going to control the mosquitoes. around the Panama Canal. This is a common tropical disease in South America and Africa. Unfortunately, 200,000 people are infected and there's 30,000 deaths involved. These are underreported, unfortunately, as well. There's going to be something called jaundice involved, hence yellow fever. We're going to also have bleeding and shock. The transmission, um, we could have the sylvatic, which is primate to mosquito. Um, we could also have the savanna, where we're going to see um, the mosquito and a non-human or human primate, and then we also have urban, which is just human to mosquito. We're going to be using the um, yellow fever virus, which is a positive um, SSRNA envelope virus. This is going to also need the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. I think I spelled that wrong, yep. Put the Y in the wrong place. It's the species of mosquito that the organism is going to be on. Uh, most cases, these are symptoms. Most cases are going to have the mild infection, which are going to have these fevers, headaches, but then the unique part going to be the chills and the back pain All right fatigue as well vomiting loss of ap appetite and then 15 percent of the cases will um have the recurring fever as well as jaundice bleeding from the mouth and eyes and then black vomit I think that one is a very unique trait of this. In the 80s, Egypti, that's a mosquito that's going to happen here. So the vir virulence is going to come from the um, stopping of blood clots. And we're going to have the cytokine storm. And this is just going to kill the host. All that shock 
on all those cytokines. The immune system is going to go crazy. This is going to kill the host. Um, treatment. The only thing listed here is supportive care, which is very, very unfortunate. This is another one that's very difficult to wrap your head around. Uh, prevention. You could use repellent. You could control the mosquitoes. Um, long clothing. Just don't um, put yourself in a situation where you're potentially exposed to um, mosquitoes. So avoid being outside at peak biting times is another good way. We also have the live attenuated vaccine for yellow fever. All right, let's talk about the protozoan disease, malaria. Malaria is found in the ancient writings of um, Chinese as well as um, cultures in India and Hindu texts. It's going to mean bad air. In 1902, Ronald Ross... Let me write these down. I didn't realize that the um, icon was there. So, bad air in 1902. Ronald Ross, he has the prize for finding the life cycle. It's very complex with a ton of steps and different terms for the um plasmodium, depending on what stage it's in. This is the most common infectious disease that's serious. Worldwide, the WHO in 1955 had an eradication or elimination plan um, 52 nations, 52 nations participate, but then um, mosquito vectors develop resistance. So shut down. Um, in 1976, the World Health Organization acknowledged the failure, and unfortunately. All right, um, there's over 200 million people affected um, per year, and 450k die per year. So it's very, very, um, it's very deserving of that most ser most common serious infectious disease title. The life cycle is very complex, so we're going to have the um, mosquito plus the plasmodium inside. So this is going to be when it's injected. I'm going to move that over here. The sporozoites go into... The cavity, or no, sorry, I read that wrong. The liver. And these are going to then um, make these merozoites. That from all that multiplication, they're going to go to the red blood cell. They're going to make the ring uh, trophozoite. when they infect other um, um, red blood cells, then we're going to then become the schizont. I'm going to actually make these, you know what? Let's make these step four and step five. So step five is going to be the schizont. 
This is going to release Merozoites. And then we're going to also differentiate into male and female gametocytes. The gametocytes go into the mosquito and then when they meet when the gametocytes the male and female gametocytes meet they become the oocyst and now the oocyst makes the sporozoites in the saliva. Very complex life cycle there. All right, the causative organism is going to be the plasmodium again. Many species, so there's just going to be falciparum, vivax, malari. We're going to also have ovale and noelsi. Noelsi, I think, yeah. Okay, uh, transmission. We're going to have the bio vector from the mosquito, a gypti. Humans are primary host. Okay, symptoms and signs, there's a ton of these. We're going to be cyclic because of the um, parasite's life cycle. We're going to have, of course, a standard fever chills. Um, we're going to have sweating every 48 to 72 hours. Um, this is from the RBC lysis. When we have our fever, chills, and sweating, this is what it's called, a paroxysm. When we have that combination of symptoms, we could also have jaundice here, anema, and fatigue. Virulence includes that multiple antigenic types. And that variation, um, they could use or scavenge glucose. They have cytoadherence. And they invade the red blood cells. Prevention. Use mosquito control again, bed nets. There's no vaccine available for malaria, unfortunately. Um, we're going to instead use the pro... Uh, lactic antiprotozole. Highlight that prophylactic. All right. Uh, the treatment. It's going to be artesinin. This is going to be a combination treatment. Okay, so drug-resistant malaria is another unfortunate factor at play.
going to see it um, be resistant to chloroquine in a lot of parts in Africa, um, the Middle East, the Arabian Peninsula, Madagascar, South America, a lot of India, China, and Indonesia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, those are chloroquine resistant. And there's artemisinin resistance in um, Vietnam, Thailand. And then chloroquine sensitive, we're going to have that in the south and central U.S. I mean, um, not central U.S., the Central America and South America near Chile and Argentina. And sensitive ones also are in the Mediterranean African countries, some of Turkey and then the Balkan states, it looks like, as well as um, Korea, it looks like. Then everywhere else isn't mentioned, the U.S., Australia, um, Russia, Western Europe, some little countries in Africa and South America, we're going to not have any endemic malaria. And then you could see malaria in microscopes. So there's going to be these like ring-like structures. I think those were the, um, the trophozoids and stuff under the microscope. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. That was all about the virus as well as the protozoan diseases. Please take care of yourself. Watch out for all these pathogens. Do um, safe things. Make good choices. And please do something nice for someone. Good night, everyone. Thank you for tuning in.